Do you know how and when to use groups when you have Google Workspace? In some cases, groups could be a key factor to decide purchasing Google Workspace for some businesses. Not all the email services have this type of capabilities. Actually, the way how they work and the flexibility to configure them in Google Workspace is a kind of unique. My name is Carlos and today we will talk about groups within Google Workspace. Here is what we will see. What is a Google group or what can you do with a group? Where to start to create a group? We will also see the key elements of a group, like the name, email, descriptions, members, permissions, and settings in general. How to access a group and how to work with it. How to configure send mail as or reply as. By the way, you can use the timestamp in the description to go directly to the part of the video that is of your interest. So let's get started. What is a Google group? To respond to these questions, I will tell you several things that you can do with a group, and hopefully they will give you a better understanding about that group. You can email everyone in a group with a single email address. It is sometimes called a distribution list. You can create a collaborative inbox to assign, track, and manage conversations. If you are a member of a group and you have the right permissions, you can respond on behalf of the group. Send mail as. There are other things that you can do with a group, but for the purpose of this video, I will leave it with that. By the way, they don't add any additional cost to your subscription when creating groups. Now, to create a group within Google Workspace, you need to have the admin role. Let's see how you can create one. For the group that I'm going to create, I'm going to think about an hypothetical case for my hypothetical business. I will create a group for my sales team. Then, when any prospect or person who is interested in our product send an email to sales at askitv.xyz, the whole team will be able to see that email. The manager will be able to assign the request or case to one of the salesperson, and this member will be able to respond from his mailbox as sales at askitv.xyz. This example could work for many types of teams, like a support, billing, administration, a project. Let's now create a group. First, you will need to access Google Workspace account. We will need to click on the upper right corner where the nine little dots are, also called like a waffle icon. Then we need to search for admin and click here. Within the Google Admin Center, we will search for groups. We will find all the groups that have been created within our Google account. Now we need to click on create group. And here we will need to enter information about the group. We need to enter a name. We will give a name sales. The description will be sales group. And we need to create a email address for our group. It is going to be sales at. We can select the domain name. If we have more than one domain name, we can click here. We will see all the domain names that will be available for our organization. If you want to know how to add additional domain names for your Google account, you can click here on this video on the top right corner. Then we can assign a, a honor to the group. This is not mandatory, so we will leave it blank for now. So we click on next. Here we will need to define the access type that our grouper will have. To contact the owners, we don't want anyone from external to contact the owners and neither for the org entire organization, probably only the group members. To view members, we don't want the entire organization to see the members of the group. So we will uncheck this one and we can allow all the members to see all group members. To view this conversation, only the group members and of course the group managers and the group owner. Here we have to select who can publish posts. We want anyone, even external people, to post or send emails to the group. In terms of management, only group manager and group owners. Who can join the group? We only want invited users to join this group 
and then we can allow members outside of your organizations to be part of this group. We're going to select this option because we have some external people that work as a salespeople in our group. So we select this option. Then we click on create group. Our group has been created and the settings has been saved. We can jump right away to add members to the group. And in this case, we're gonna click here. There is not any member yet on this group. And then we click on add members. I'm going to start by adding myself and I'm going to add an external user that doesn't have a email address within our organization. However, this will be part of the sales team and this person will be able to access the group. This is his email address, is a Gmail address, and then we click on add to group. So far, we have two members under this group, one within the organization, which is myself, and another one is an external user with a Gmail address. At this point, we need to set up additional settings. We click on access settings, and here we go to advanced settings. Within the advanced settings, we will be able to see the general information that we already completed. We can make this group a collaborative inbox, which will give us additional tools that will be useful for our group. We're going to select here. We continue scrolling down. We are allowing external members on this group. In terms of privacy, we want only members to see all the email addresses. We continue scrolling down and we will find this option here. Who can post as group? We want anyone who is a member to post as a group. We select here, we continue scrolling down, and under the spam message handling, we're going to select post suspicious messages to the group. We don't want to miss any email. So it means that the spam filter won't block any email sent to the group. We have the option to add a prefix to the emails that are being handled by the group. In our case, we're going to add the prefix sales. If we want, we can include a footer to every email. We don't want to do that at, at this moment. We can also include a auto reply. We're not going to add any at this moment. And then we click on save changes. Our group should be ready to work. Let's see how we can access our group. I'm going to my mailbox and I'm going to click here again on the waffle icon and I need to click on groups. I will find here all the groups that I am a member. We can see here the recently created group, which is sales, and it is empty, no conversation at this time. So let's send a email to the group. So I have access a different email account, and I'm going to send an email to sales. I add the subject and add a text to my message. So I click on send. Now I'm going back to my group. I refresh the page here. And I can see the first message that has been sent to the group. I will also be able to access these messages from my mailbox. And I see it here. We can also see the email has a prefix on the subject as we set it up when we create the group. I can reply from here or I also can reply from my groups. When I reply to this message as a member of the group, I click here and I click from, I will be able to select to reply from sales. We can write our reply and we click post message. We can go back again to the mailbox of the person who sent this message and we can see it here. If I open, I will see my reply. Let's also access the mailbox of the external member, the one with the Gmail account. He will find a email with a conversation of the group and also from his groups. If he click on the upper right corner, he can search for groups. If he don't see it here, he can click on more from Google and then click on browse all products. And here is Google groups. Here he can see all the groups where he is a member. He is only a member of this group that we just created. And here he can see the conversation as well. So any member has two ways to access the conversation within their mailbox or within their groups. The external member also will be able to reply as the group. Let's say, for example, that he wants to reply this message. Click reply all. And there he can select where he wants to reply from as his email address or as the group email address. As you may remember, when we set up 
the group, we create this group as a collaborative inbox to see the features or tools that we can use for a collaborative inbox. We are going back to see the groups from my mailbox. For example, I can select this conversation and here I can assign this case to a specific member. We click here and we can select this user. This is the external member. We can assign the case to him and we can add a message. Click on done. On the right, we will see who has been assigned to this case. Reassign it to me or we can remove the assignment. We can also mark this case or conversation as complete. We can mark it as duplicate or no actions needed for this case. These are two specifically for the collaborative inbox. As a review, we created a group, configure several settings, add members. We add also external members. We access the group as an internal member and also as an external member. We also check how we can use the tools for the collaborative inbox. I hope that at this time, you are already finding ways to use Google Group for your team or your business. If you do, I invite you to give us a thumbs up. If you want to leave a comment or ask any question, please leave it here down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one or want to find it easily again in the future, please hit the subscribe button. Remember, it is free and it helps me to continue creating content like this one. Thank you, and I hope to see you next time.